Hello and welcome to MBKM Models. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more great aircraft documentaries and model build videos. The Douglas DC-1 was the first model of the famous American DC Douglas commercial transport aircraft series. Although only one example of the DC-1 was produced, the design was the basis for the DC-2 and DC-3, the latter being one of the most successful aircraft in the history of aviation. Development of the DC-1 can be traced back to the 1931 crash of a TWA airliner, a Fokker F-10 trimotor, in which a wing fell, probably because water had seeped between the layers of the wood, laminate, and dissolved the glue holding the layers together. Following the accident, the aeronautics branch of the US Department of Commerce placed stringent restrictions on the use of wooden wings on passenger airliners. Boeing developed an answer, the 247, a twin-engine all-metal mono plane with a retractable undercarriage but their production capacity was reserved to meet the needs of United Airlines, part of United Aircraft and Transport Corporation, which also owned Boeing. TWA needed a similar aircraft to respond to competition from the Boeing 247 and they asked five manufacturers to bid for construction of a three-engine 12 c aircraft of all-metal construction capable of flying 1,080 miles at 150 miles per hour. The most demanding part of the specification was that the airliner would have to be capable of safely taking off from any airport on TWA's main routes and in particular Albuquerque at high altitude and with severe summer temperatures with one engine non-functioning. Donald Douglas was initially reluctant to participate in the invitation from TWA. He doubted that there would be a market for 100 aircraft, the number of sales necessary to cover development costs. Nevertheless, he submitted a design consisting of an all-metal low-wing twin-engined aircraft seating 12 passengers, a crew of two and a flight attendant. The aircraft exceeded the specifications of TWA even with only two engines, principally through the use of controllable pitch propellers. It was insulated against noise, heated and fully capable of both flying and performing a controlled takeoff or landing on one engine. Donald Douglas stated in a 1935 article on the DC-2 that the first DC-1 cost $325,000 to design and build. Only one aircraft was produced. The prototype made its maiden flight on July the 1st, 1933. Flown by Carl Cover, it was given the model name DC-1 or Douglas Commercial Model 1. During a half year of testing, it performed more than 200 test flights and demonstrated its superiority over the most used airliners at that time, the Ford Trimotor and Fokker Trimotor. It was flown across the United States on February 19, 1934, making the journey in the record time of 13 hours and 5 minutes. TWA accepted the aircraft on the 15th of September 1933, with a few modifications mainly increasing seating to 14 passengers and adding more powerful engines, and subsequently ordered 20 examples of the developed production model, which was named the Douglas DC-2. The DC-1 was sold to Lord Forbes in the United Kingdom in May 1938, who operated it for a few months before selling it in France in October 1938. It was then sold to LAPE in Spain in November 1938 and was also used by the Spanish Republican Air Force as a transport aircraft. It was later operated by Iberia Airlines from July 1939. It forced landed at Malaga in Spain on October 4, 1940 and was damaged beyond repair. The Douglas DC-2 is a 14-passenger twin-engine airliner that was produced by the American company Douglas Aircraft Company starting in 1934. It competed with the Boeing 247. In 1935, Douglas produced a larger version called the DC-2. DC-3, which became one of the most successful aircraft in history. In the early 1930s, fears about the safety of wooden aircraft structures drove the US aviation industry to develop all-metal airliners. United Airlines had the exclusive right to the all-metal twin-engine Boeing 247. Rival TWA issued a specification for an all-metal tri-motor. The Douglas response was more radical when it flew on July 1st, 1933 
3, the prototype DC-1 had a robust tapered wing, retractable landing gear and two 690 horsepower 515 kilowatt right radial engines, driving variable pitch propellers. It seated 12 passengers. Douglas test pilot Carl Cover flew the first test flight on May 11, 1934 of the DC-2, which was longer than the DC-1, had more powerful engines and carried 14 passengers in a 66-inch wide cabin. TWA was the launch customer for the DC-2 ordering 20. The design impressed American and European airlines and further orders followed. Although Fokker had purchased a production license from Douglas for $100,000, around $2 million in modern terms, no manufacturing was done in the Netherlands. Those for European customers, KLM, LOT, Swissair, CLS and LAPE, purchased by the way of Fokker in the Netherlands, were built and flown by Douglas in the US, sea shipped to Europe with wings and propellers detached, then erected at airfields by Fokker near the seaport of arrival, for example Cherbourg or Rotterdam. Airspeed Limited took a similar license for DC-2s to be delivered in Britain and assigned the company designation Airspeed AS-23, but although a registration for one aircraft was reserved, none were built. Another license was taken by the Nakajima Aircraft Company in Japan. Unlike Fokker and Airspeed, Nakajima built five aircraft as well as assembling at least one Douglas built aircraft. A total of 130 civil DC-2s were built with another 62 for the United States military. In 1935, Donald Douglas stated in an article that the DC-2 cost about $80,000, around $2 million in modern terms per aircraft if mass produced. Although overshadowed by its ubiquitous successor, it was the DC-2 that showed that passenger air travel could be comfortable, safe and reliable. As a token of this, KLM entered its first DC-2 PHAJU store in the October 1934 McRobertson Air Race between London and Melbourne. Out of the 20 entrants, it finished second behind the purpose-built de Havilland DH-88 racer Grosvenor House race time 70 hours 54 minutes and nearly three hours ahead of the Boeing 247D. During the total journey time of 90 hours, 13 minutes, it was in the air for 81 hours, 10 minutes. It won the handicap section of the race as although the DH-88 had finished in the handicap section, the regulations allowed the crew to claim only one victory. It flew KLM's regular 9,000 mile route, a thousand miles longer than the official race route, carrying mail, making every scheduled passenger stop, turning back once to pick up a stranded passenger and Thanks for watching, thanks for listening and until next time.